Okay, I'm in Corel Draw 2018. I always start my document right here at File New. I want a 24 by 12. I want an RGB color scheme. That's even going to be even more important with this. And I'm going to import my file. I'm going to vectorize it in Corel Draw and then bring in that vectorized file into Mastercam X7. So I'm going to start here. I could make this page the size of my cutting board if I want. And then I'm going to go File, Import, and I've already found an image that I, I want to work with. And I've created in bare cutting board. No, I didn't. So here's an image I want to work with. I'm going to put that image in here. And there's just, it's, that's um, not vectorized at all. So once I have that image set, I'm going to go up here to trace bitmap. I'm going to center line, tra I'm going to outline trace a logo. And that's converting it to a vector. I make sure both delete and remove background are selected here. And that looks like a pretty good vectorization of it. Then I'm going to go over here and I am going to unfill the image. So it takes out all the fill. And then I'm going to outline it. And I'm going to outline it with a hairline red. And that the, it has to be 255, 0, 0 to designate a vector. So now I have a vectorized image. If I wanted to take this over to Corel Draw, I could take this vector and this would be a cutout. Everybody with me on that? Then I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it as a Corel file. And then additionally, I'm also going to export it. And I'm going to export it as a DXF. So that's an AutoCAD file. I could go all the way down here to find DXF. And I'm going to export it as a DXF into that same folder. And I export it. Now that I've created, I vectorized that bear and I have a clean vector image, I'm going to open up Mastercam. And here I am in Mastercam now. And what I'm going to do in Mastercam is I'm going to go File, Open, and I'm going to go to that folder I created the bear in, and I'm going to open up that DXF file. It's going to give me this pop-up window. I'm going to hit green check mark. And then there's my bear as a vector. And then this is going to be fit screen there. This right here is clear colors. And F9 on my keyboard gives me my Cartesian coordinates. So if I want to um, kind of center that on the middle of my cutting board, that's going to be a manipulation. So it's X form, drag. I want to select my whole image. I'm done selecting, so I hit the green Kabbalah ball there. And then I'm going to drag this thing so it's centered on my origin like that. I'm done the operation and back to fit screen. When I open a new file as a DXF, it brings me to a default router. So what I have to do is now I have to go back to my machine router and select my techno servo. And once I pull in my techno servo here, I'm going to go back to this machine group and delete that group. So now I have Techno Servo Router, and then I'm going to set up my stock. Uh, I'm not too sure how big that image was. So let's say I make this 15 by 15 by 3 quarters. If I want to see what that looks like, I hit display right there. And then I can see that bear barely fits on that board. So I could manipulate my geometry by going to X form. So I'm going to hit X form. I want to scale that. I want to scale that vector. I'm done selecting it. I'm going to scale it uh, maybe two and a half times the size of it. Let me see here. That's going to be a copy. That's going to be a move. That's not going to quite fit on there. Let me try a scale of two. So that, that fits on there okay. Um, so I'm done that operation. So, whoops, 
I actually, I click my roller mouse down like I do in a CAD software. So now I'm in an isometric view. I have to go back up to um, a front view. I don't see it. Where's the top side view? There you so there's top view, left, front. So I want a top view. So now I'm back in 2D. All right, now I want to tool pass this thing. Just because I created a vector doesn't mean it's going to tool pass. I mean, I could see some problems here with the bit getting in there, but we might as well just see what it looks like. So I'm going to tool pass the contour. I'm going to name that contour. Uh, I'm going to select it with the chain. I'm going counterclockwise. I'm going to walk through this right here. I'm going to use a quarter inch flat end mill to cut it out. So we, this might be a better cutout with an eighth inch bit and do a lot more passes, but I'll just select the quarter here to see what it's going to look like. My feed rate's 100. My plunge rate is 50. And I'm going to work, I'm going to hold those settings. I'm going to work my way down here. Wait, I'm going counterclockwise, right? So as I go counterclockwise, I want left-hand compensation. That'll keep it outside the part. My depth of cut is less than the diameter of my bit, say 0.25. That holds the setting, lead in, lead out. I could leave that on or off in this case, breakthrough, multi-path. I am going to tab it. And I'm going to do automatic tabs, and I'm going to tab all my parts, not just my small pieces. And then under linking parameters, again, these are all absolute. And this is negative 0.75. So now I have a tool path. This is where it's starting. This little arrow is saying left-hand compensation, and this is direction of travel. I'm going to hit verify. Actually, I should have saved it before I did that. Here's my verify screen. I think I watch that verify in an isometric view. So I'm going to watch an isometric view. So that looks like a pretty good cut out of that bear. You know, th this part right here is kind of weird. So, you know, you could change that a little bit, but I don't see any problems with it. You know, so if you wanted that bear in your cutting board, that would be it. I would just keep this file. I would save this file, and then I would post it. It's an NC file. This is a conversion um, to G code. Now it's taking all that vector information and converting it into Cartesian coordinates, which is a lot of processing. And then there's that G code right there. It's going to be, you know, that last couple programs were maybe a couple hundred lines of code, and this is 1,600 lines of code, right? Because it's, it's splitting it all into separate little straight lines and arcs. So now I could go run that bear out of my board.